Hello everyone. Today's presentation topic is intercomparisons of site VSWR measurements methods using mode filtering, time domain, and spatial sampling techniques. My name is Zong Chen. I'm with ETS Lindgren. And I also would like to acknowledge my co-author, Professor Stuart Gregson from Next Phase Measurements. A brief introduction. Site VSWR, or commonly referred as SVSWR, is a metric for measuring EMC test chambers above 1 GHz, as specified in the International Standard CISPR 16. We introduced a cylindrical mode expansion and mode filtering technique in the last year's AMTA symposium. And this method is used to measure SVSWR from a different approach. And this overcomes several shortcomings of the traditional uh, approach as specified in the CISPR standards. In this year's contribution, we further validate this method by first comparing the ray-based quasi-far-field translation to move the antenna from an offset position to the center of rotation uh, using a more rigorous quasi-far-field to far-field for formulation. And the other thing we did is we compared the test results from the test uh, time domain approach and also the traditional SVSWR method and compared those results from our um, uh, pro new propo uh, proposed method and show the correlation between all these different uh, methods. Just a brief review of the traditional SVSWR method. So on the screen, you can see this is the way typical SVSWR measurement is done is with an omnidirectional antenna in the quiet zone. And you would measure the uh, antenna, you would place the antenna at different spots in the quiet zone, and then you move the antenna along a linear line. For example, in the front position, you move from the front and toward the uh, center of the quiet zone, and then you sample at six spots, and, and then you would uh, measure at each frequency the maximum and minimum to derive your um, site VSWR or this from the standing wave. A uh, couple of challenges with this traditional approach is that because you're only sampling six spots in the uh, typically the movement is only centimeter, 40 centimeter long, and you, you're you not able to capture the true max or min. And as a result the, uh, of the undersampling, uh, the data can be very erratic and the test is also very tedious and time consuming because of all the different locations and polarizations and heights. Uh, so this is a very tedious re uh, measurement process and also uh, the test result uh, could be very erratic. So last year we introduced this mode filtering approach. Uh, essentially we would place the antenna at the edge of the turntable and rotate the antenna uh, through this whole uh, 360 degrees and, and obtain the vector data that way uh, between the two antennas, transmit and receive antenna. And then mathematically, we can translate the antenna to the center uh, using the uh, array-based approach. The equation is shown on the screen. And from that, we can compute the cylindrical mode coefficients. And after the movement, uh, we can see that the antenna modes is mostly centered in the lower order. And we can apply a filter uh, to extract the true antenna pattern and without the effects from the reflections in the chamber. And so after we extract the true antenna pattern, uh, we can see the difference between the uh, perturbed pattern and the, the antenna pattern after filtering. And from that, we can derive the SVSWR. So this is a picture of the actual test setup. You can see the transmit antenna, which is a double ridged waveguide antenna at three meters from the front of the quiet zone and the omnidirectional antenna is placed 0.5 meters from the center of the uh, turntable and the turntable would rotate. We uh, measure the uh, antenna response between the two antennas at each stop. So we have a um, sampling of 0.75 degrees per, um, per step. So we place the antenna at offset position and rotate the um, uh, the antenna through the 360 degrees uh, to sample the VSWR at the edge of the quiet zone. And this actually, this offset uh, creates the most separation for us for the proposed method. This is actually one of the key components uh, to allow us the mode separation between the antenna and the reflections because the antenna itself is coherently translated. 
um, because we're applying a phase coherent translation. At the same time, the reflections associated with the chamber surfaces and those components cannot be coherently translated because that relationship is not coherent between the antenna and the, and the reflections. And this will allow the antenna, uh, after we move it, the uh, CMCs associated with the antennas all concentrated in the lower order associated with the size of the antenna. And the reflections are not coherently moved and still spread out to the higher order. This gives us the, gives us the opportunity to apply a filter. So in the last year's AMTA, we introduced this ray-based re, uh, translation from the uh, offset position back to the center, essentially using the phase difference between the path of R1 and R0, and also the uh, 1 over R relationship uh, that's uh, from these two different distances. So you can see this is basically a geo uh, kind of approach to move uh, the offset position back to the center. So in this uh, formulation, we assume the antennas are electrically small and the antennas are in a quasi far field distance. And for the type of antenna that's used for SBSWR measurement, and these two assumptions are very good assumptions. And uh, so the question we want to answer in this study first is how valid is that approach? Is there a different way to do this so we can validate this approach? It turns out that there is a different formulation by first applying a rigorous quasi far field to far field translation uh, from the uh, measurement directly without doing the offset uh, translation. So we, we basically set, you, uh, uh, consider the whole quiasone size as the antenna size, and we, we can actually measure the antenna response in the quasi near field, and we can translate um, that uh, pattern into the far field uh, directly. So then after we get the far field response, of course, we can move the antenna back to the center. And now this movement is a much simpler equation because now the only difference is really the phase difference, that delta difference between the offset position and the center location. So that's the only thing we need to uh, apply, that phase differential to move the antenna patterns back to the center from the far field. This slide highlights the difference between the two different approaches. Uh, from the ray-based approach and the quasi-far-field to far-field approach. In the ray-based approach, you would translate uh, the antenna from the measurement uh, first to the center uh, using the ray-based formulation we showed earlier. And then from there on, you can compute the um, cylindrical mode coefficients using a Fourier transform. In the uh, quasi-far-field to far-field approach, uh, you need to compute the CMCs with the antenna offset. So now you're actually sampling the whole uh, quiasone size as opposed to just the antenna size. And then from there, you can calculate the uh, cylindrical mode coefficients with a little more complicated formula as shown in, in the screen. And there you can compute the far field pattern uh, because you, uh, after you obtain the uh, cylindrical mode coefficients. And now the antenna in, is in the far field we can translate to the center using the uh, far field uh, phase shift. And uh, after that, you can compute the uh, CMCs again from the now centered pattern. This slide shows the mode distribution for the two different translation methods we mentioned earlier. And the X axis is the mode, and the Y axis is the powers associated with that mode. And you can see the yellow line is the uh, filtered data and the uh, orange line is the ray-based approach, and the blue line is the quasi-far-field to far-field, the more rigorous approach without uh, the, using the ray-based approximation. And you can see the correlations between the two methods is very good, especially after filtering, uh, which is what we are after. We're interested in the antenna pattern without the reflections. And after filtering, these two uh, methods essentially give us a very close results. This shows the uh, resulting SBSWR using the two different approaches. Uh, the left side is the more rigorous quasi far field, the far field based processing, and the right side is the ray based processing we introduced last year. You can see uh, the moving average, which is uh, going to give you a better comparison, an easier comparison. You can see these two approaches give you very similar results. And one thing must be pointed out is that the quasi far field to far field requires a a much higher sampling rate because now you're 
uh, translation is based on the size of the, the offset position of the antenna versus the ray-based approach, after you move to the center, that uh, translation is actually, uh, now the antenna is centered, the translation uh, sampling rate is, you, you, to, to get the correct pattern of the antenna is just the size of the antenna. So the, uh, the difference is most likely because of the much higher sampling requirement and also the accuracy that's associated with that requirement. Uh, from the quasi far field to far field approach. So this is actually one of the benefits of the ray based approach is that it, it, it places uh, far less requ uh, stringent requirements on the sampling and, and also the positioning. So this is the second aspect of the qualification of uh, the validation we, we performed is comparing the results with the time domain approach. So because the antenna is uh, for this measurement for this study is broadband we can actually apply time domain gating around the circle. So at each stop of the antenna, we can apply a time domain gating uh, centered around the main peak to only retain the main antenna to antenna response and remove the reflections. So this is just a uh, time domain view uh, of uh, example at the front position. Of course, we did this at every single stop around the 360 rotation. This shows the comparison between the mode filter data uh, to the time domain gated data. And you can see the uh, red curve is the mode filter data and the blue line is the time domain gated uh, uh, antenna pattern. So the X axis is zero to 360, the rotation angle, and the uh, Y axis is the response in dB. And at, at higher frequency, the correlation is really very excellent. Even at lower frequency, the correlation is pretty good. So this is very encouraging indeed that the two methods all give us a uh, much cleaner antenna pattern without the interference from the chamber. This shows the time domain gated SBSWR resulting SBSWR compared to the mode filter SBSWR. Again, you can see the excellent correlations between the two methods we essentially get uh, pretty much the same results. Either we use time domain gating and mode filtering. So the third aspect of this comparison study, a validation study, is that we want to compare the results from this mode filtered method uh, to the traditional method and see how well they correlate. And this chart gives you that information. On the left, I show the results, uh, which you've seen earlier, which is the mode filtered SBSWR. And the right uh, three charts shows the uh, um, SBSWR using the traditional CISPR approach. And if you look at the moving average, uh, you can see certainly the correlation, the shape is very similar. And uh, of course the mode filtering, because it's not on the sample as the traditional method, it shows the result are slightly more stringent. So we'll touch upon this topic again in a, in a later slide. So there's another traditional approach is called uh, time domain SBSWR. So that's based on uh, separation using time domain uh, separation uh, to calculate the uh, reflection coefficient and then convert that to set VSWR. So that's another method specified by the NCC 63.25 standards. And you can see again, the correlation between the mode filter and the uh, time domain SBSWR is uh, very similar to the comparison to the traditional CISPR approach. And the uh, other thing is that the mode filter data is again, uh, uh, shows a little more, uh, more pessimistic or more stringent results. Actually, one of the biggest reasons that uh, the uh, uh, mode filtering technique is more stringent is actually because we, in the mode filtering technique, we actually consider the full circle when we calculate the stand, when we uh, sample the standing wave. And the traditional approach only measures the data at the front, left, and uh, right position, essentially only the front part of the circle. And if we take our mode filter data and calculate the VSWR only based on the front circle, now the data uh, severity of the test is actually very much in line with the traditional approach. The main takeaway of this validation study is that the method is very accurate. We did a pretty comprehensive validation study and to show that the ray-based approach is 
accurate for the small electrical antenna that used for these type of uh, EMC uh, site VSWR measurements. The rebased approach is actually preferred because it reduced the sampling requirements and relaxed the, uh, the instrumentation and position or accuracies. And we get very similar results compared to the more rigorous approach. And also we obtained very good correlation between the mode filter pattern with the time domain gated pattern. This further validated the mode filtering technique. And compared to the traditional site VSWR method using the CISPR approach or the TD uh, NC approach, it, we also showed a good correlation. The mode filtering method uh, could be more severe because if we using uh, because it doesn't undersample the data. So a moving average scheme should be used to match the severity and also to match the test topology of the traditional approach uh, to calculate that VSWR, the ripples from only the front half of the circle should be considered. And after we do that, the test severity using the proposed approach uh, is very much in line with the severity of the traditional SVSWR approach.